What did y'all do? You're not even supposed to be on the porch. You're supposed to be out there eating grass. No coconut. Let's go. Come on. Come on. It's okay. Thank you. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike with Fowler Family Farm. Yes, my goats made a mess. And if you watched my last video, you're probably wondering why they're even out. So let me go show you. I do like to have them out here though anyway. I just don't want them to eat Tanya's plants. If I go this way, they should follow me. Hey, watch it, duck. The ducks are getting brave. They're pretty much staying right with us and right with the goats. <laughs> By the way, y'all, I've got two video clips I'm gonna throw in this uh, video here. Two separate video clips that aren't really part of the goats or anything, but I think the second one you guys will really find interesting. It's about Braxton, uh, so don't miss it. It's at the end of the video. Okay, so let me show you real quick why these uh, goats are out. It's obviously, it's, it's probably gonna be pretty obvious to you. I anticipated they would eat through this in about eight days. It only took them four. So I'm going to throw in some video real quick of what this looked like uh, before they before I put them in here. And I'll try to go to the same area so you can kind of get a good look at it. So in my last video, I showed you what this looked like from right here, from this angle. So I'm just going to put them in next to each other and you can kind of see what they've done. And like, really, it was like three and a half days. It turns and goes straight that direction. But over here on this side, it still just keeps going. It goes all the way down to the chicken coop. And then that end goes all the way over and connects to the corner there and goes all the way to that far corner you see over there. So that's the shape of it. So I have been putting them out, letting them out of this pen for the last three days, four days, which they enjoy it. They enjoy getting out there and, and eating the green grass and kind of going all over the place. And personally, I like it too, because it keeps them on fresh ground, which keeps them from getting too wormy. If they stay on the same spot over and over and over and over, if it's not big enough, that if that spot isn't big enough, they could get a high worm load. And that's what you want to avoid with goats. Also, Donald is out. <laughs> Donald's been out for two days now. I opened the door uh, to feed them and I didn't close it properly behind me when I was in there feeding them. I was inside the pen, the coop for the run. And uh, he got out uh, and I haven't been able to get him back in, but he should be fine, hopefully. <laughs> he's old, he's like six years old. He's taking care of himself this long. He can probably keep taking care of himself out here. Probably doesn't need my help. But that does give me some time to clean out this pen without Donald in there. He never has flocked me, but man, I hate cleaning in such a small area with the rooster right behind my back. It's kind of nervous. So one thing I do like about having all the goats under these trees so we can help clear it out, they shorten the grass and thin out the grass so good that you can start seeing these sticks. When it's tall like this, this is where we're gonna put them next. When it's tall like this, you just, I mean, they just grow right over your trees. So we're gonna put them in here and they're gonna clear this out fairly quick because this is a pretty small area. I'd say they'll they'll clear that out in probably four days again. Uh, it's a little thicker, a little more heavier terrain to get around and stuff, but they love that stuff. They love climbing over trees to get to the next spot. So they'll enjoy being over there. But this is what I'm talking about. You can start seeing sticks. Uh, so what we do after the goats come in, we, we end up making stick piles. Got one there. Got one there. Uh, I got a pretty good pile here, which I think that one might have already been here. Here's a stick pile right here. This is all poison ivy vines. Crazy. So if y'all can tell, this is a natural flow of the water right here. So it's it stays kind of damp a lot. But I do like to throw all my stuff that I'm going to burn in this little overflow area. 
Uh, that's where I like to burn. Plus it helps me burn out like stumps like that one. I'll probably stack everything on this stump this year. Try to burn that stump out. And any of the leaves that we're not gonna use. I do like to try to use the leaves, you know, for compost or putting them around other the trunks of trees. Uh, but if we don't, if we have too many, I can always put them down in here and just burn through them. So now you can see this area is thinned out pretty well. You can see all the sticks. So it'd be easy to just come in here with a large leaf rake and just rake these uh, sticks up. And some of the leaves will come with it. And then just throw it right over there. Start burning them. All right, so let's go take a look at the goats. Well, hello, Starlight. Good afternoon. They're going after it. What? So it's kind of funny. You can tell who mama and daughter is. Even like two years later, you can tell who the mama and the daughter is. Like for instance, right over here, this is Ginger and York. York is Ginger's baby. And you can tell just by this. York is two and a half years old and she still sits by her mama. And her mama still lets her. It's like they still know they're related. Huh. Huh, Ginger. Ginger is one of my friendliest goats. York is one of my unfriendliest goats. It's not like mama, like daughter. Uh-uh. Oh, look at coconut. This is funny. You ready for dinner? Is that what you're waiting for? Is that our dinner picnic table? What are you doing up there? What are you doing, coconut? What are you doing, girl? It's okay. <laughs> so we had a pretty good storm come through. A lot of wind. You see these chairs are flipped over. I had a box over there that's up against my fence. I need to go take it off. It's probably grounding the fence out. Still got seven ducks. They're doing pretty good. We do not put them up anymore. We do let the ducks kind of do their natural thing. They'll find their own place to sleep now. They're big enough that really, they're gonna have, I'm sure they still have predators. Don't get me wrong, but they're, they're not gonna be easily attached like a chicken but they still won't go to the pond. And yes, somebody put in the comments, why don't I carry their carry or walk the ducks over to the pond? I've done that several, several times. I've carried each duck over to the pond at least three times, at least over the past month. And then I also make them follow me because they'll follow me with food, just like the goats will. I'll follow them all the way over there to the water. They just come right back. They don't, they don't really care to be over there. It's kind of weird. Okay, I wanna turn you around, take you over here to my mom's. Kinda of show you what Brendan and Braxton are working on. Yeah, that's what Brendan and Braxton have been working on. This is my dad's boat. Uh, he's had it for quite a while. But we haven't used this boat in the past, I don't know, five years, maybe. It's, it's been in this RV shop right here. So I got like probably 15 minutes of them cleaning and working on this boat. I don't want to put 15 minutes in there for you guys to watch, but I'm going to put maybe three to five minutes of some humor and some them working on the boat. Uh, we were all down here, but really it was just uh, Brennan and Braxton working on it. And my brother helped a little bit uh, and I just videoed and laughed at them. So now they're working on my mom's lawnmower. I think they're going to sharpen the blades for her. But all this stuff came out of the boat. That's why it looks junky right now. They're still cleaning it. So Brendan and Braxton are working on Papa's boat so they can sell it. Now you get a hose, hook it up to the water hose, stretch out two or three of them. When you put it on there, you put the hose on top of it. You hold the bottom one and start 
Close the hose there, yeah. I'm going to send Brendan to burn school so he can learn how to get burnt right. Because he keeps getting burned. He got burned twice today. Twice already? Yeah. I heard about the first one. I didn't hear about the second one. The, the first one was with gas. The second one hit. With the battery? With the battery. I heard he about that the battery one. table on fire. <laughs> and he reached down there to try to grab it. <laughs> oh, it was it's just learning. <laughs> He's learning. Young, young lessons. <laughs> And I'll let you scrub it. So y'all actually got it started, huh? So none of the cables? No, we got it, it, it to didn't turn get started, over. but we got it to turn over. Okay. And we've been looking for the keys. We've been trying to get it to start. We had to go buy a brand new battery. So the, do you but think here. the uh, wires have been chewed through or no? Oh, yeah. Oh, they have? Some of them the, have. It may not be anything important to start the engine. Maybe like a dash light doesn't work uh, or yeah. the radio doesn't work. We'll still have work. to fix all that. Huh? We'll still have to fix all that. Too. Yeah, I know. I got home at one o'clock. And it's now six o'clock. What time is it? It's about five thirty. About five thirty. Yeah. And we've been trying to do this. Me and Mima went and bought a new brat battery, and we've been trying all sorts of stuff. We finally found the key after a couple different tries. But yeah. So it means it works at least. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's good. Go. Yep. Makes noise. So this was uh, Paul Paul's pride and joy boat when we'd go to the lake. We used to go to Lake Ten Killer. Every weekend, stay there for four or five days. And uh, since he's been ill and since we moved here, it's just been in the shop. As you can see, it needs some TLC. <laughs> okay, don't video that. Yeah, I'm videoing no. that. Yeah. Well, we're done talking about so, that. So I turned the water on and you can hear it. And Braxton's like, oh my gosh, it's raining just right over there. I can hear it. Uh, over there on the tree. It's just it raining. It's like just it. raining right over there, he said. Right where the goats are. Hey, Papa was laughing at me getting in the boat. Oh. Yeah, I should have videoed that. I know. I said, I'm not 30 anymore. Well, while they're over there cleaning the boat, I'm going to video the mamas. I let the mamas out. But look at that. They're loving this area. This kind of area right here is made for goats. This is what they want. So they are happy. I say we go down to the pond and do some quick fishing without everybody bothering us. While they're working and cleaning, I can go fish. Look at that, y'all. They are loving it down there. Yep, this is right up their alley. This is their natural habitat. They love this kind of brush. Fishing's a no-go. Too mossy, I was catching nothing but moss. Let's go up there and see if the rest of the family needs help with the boat. Well, you got it started. Does it go? There's water running through it, so it's okay. Let's, yeah. make, let's make it go. Let's, let's go, go to the lake. <laughs> let's go to the lake. <laughs> y'all wanna do some, uh, y'all wanna do some uh, grass surfing? All that yeah, with the boat. Dirty <laughs> is it all dirty? Yeah, it is dirty water. Good job. So the reason they're doing all that work that you just watched is my dad wants to sell the boat. We also have a boat over here. Um, it's more of a fishing boat, deep well fishing boat. But uh, my dad wants to sell that. We haven't used it in ages. We don't really get off the farm to go to the lake very often anymore. We used to have a lake lot and we went every weekend. That was just kind of like our uh, family fun. 
I mean, we would go every single weekend in the summer. Drive three hours, stay the whole weekend because we had a, you know, a lake lot. A lot of fun, a lot of memories, but we're moving on. I do want to look for a, a lake lot down the road for, you know, my family and underneath me uh, to enjoy, but maybe five years from now. Let me turn you around and show you Chip and Megatron real quick. So y'all obviously know that these two bucks cannot keep up with this area. Even if I fenced it off right here behind this lean-to, they still couldn't keep up with just this. Because it's so much. So my goal is to let these two bucks stay here for another two weeks, probably. Maybe, maybe, it just depend, really it just depends on how much it rains. Two to three weeks, maybe four. And then I'm going to put the mamas back over here, put the bucks back over there. Because the mamas can, all those mama goats, they can take care of this three acres over here. Uh, just kind of rotate through it and keep it down. I will have to do some brush hogging, uh, but they can do a pretty good number on this. Okay, so Which is kind of strawberry. we are at Starbucks. And let me zoom in right here. The whole family's here. Y'all see, that's Braxton right there. Braxton works at Starbucks now instead of Chick-fil-A. This is pretty interesting. Look at this. Meet your barista. Barista. Braxton. Fun fact. First barista hired for Paul's Valley. So he was the first employee hired here at this store. Braxton's favorite food? Pizza. Favorite color? Blue. Favorite drink? Sprite. And this is the uh, news we've been hiding from y'all. favorite Starbucks drink, the pink drink with no strawberry, or an iced vanilla latte. So the whole family came up to uh, have a drink while Braxton's working. Meemaw, Tanya, Braxton, Braden, Brendan, Ashton, Lincoln, and that's Tanya's friend Tiffany. Right? Hi! Hey, Mr. Lincoln. Hey, buddy. <laughs> First cake pop. Is that pretty good? Yeah, he destroyed it. <laughs> so Braxton made me a vanilla cream, nitro, sweet cream, I don't know, something. Oh, this is what he got. Looks good. If you didn't like it, yeah, I did say that. Alright, we gotta go. Gotta say bye to Brax. Bye, Brax. Okay, so as you can see, I, I mean, I, I think I've pointed it out pretty clearly on the video, on the board where it shows future airmen of the United States Air Force. So yes, Braxton is following in his brother's footsteps. He is going to the Air Force. He's already signed up and everything. He's waiting on one test, um, which he'll probably get back the results today, or I mean, uh, this week. So after that, it's just depending on when he actually wants to get out and leave. So he'll be gone for four years, y'all. Uh, our first son, Brendan, he was gone for six years, and that was a struggle, especially for Tanya. So now Braxton's going to do it. He's only going to do a four-year contract, we think. He could surprise us and end up doing a six-year. But um, anyway, so y'all saw that video. That was Starbucks. Um, Braxton... Oh, she's still on the table. Braxton loves coffee. He's been into coffee for about the last three years. He actually wanted to start a coffee truck, and we we looked into it, buying one, helping him get started. Um, it just wasn't feasible at the time with his homeschool and everything else going on. Uh, he still wanted to work at Chick-fil-A at that time. Um, so we never went through with it, but he still makes us coffee right here. He has a lot of coffee equipment that he makes us coffee with. Um, and it was pretty interesting that he was the first barista, first person hired right here at our new Starbucks here in Paul's Valley. Pretty cool. I think it just kind of shows what kind of impact Braxton leaves wherever he's at. He makes a big impact. Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter what it is or where it is. He makes an impact and, and he wants to be that kind of person that does leave an impact on someone. He wants to make a difference. Uh, it's pretty impressive. He's a good kid. All right. So I thought I'd leave y'all with the 
What are you doing? Really? Is that how you itch your foot? Is that how you scratch it? <laughs> All right, y'all. I thought I'd leave y'all with the... A little bit more of the goats. I did throw some cantaloupe stuff out here to see if the goats would eat on it. As you see, they don't really eat much of it. It's just laying here in the dirt. They won't touch it now, probably. The ducks probably will. Hi, coconut. Oh, now you're gonna use your horn? All right, hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. We'll see y'all on the next one. Remember, do the good. The Feller Family Farm Come along and ride with us Through this life journey we go through At the Feller